Welcome into episode one. Yes, episode one of the new Mountain East Conference podcast, MEC Roundup. And I'm your host, Taylor Kennedy. Thank you all for joining me. However, you may be listening or watching this program. And man, we got a treat for you all today. Let's first start off by doing this. You can follow me on Twitter at Taylor underscore Kennedy seven. And you can also follow the Mountain East uh, Conference as well. Just by looking them up on social media pages. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. However you want to find us, hey, we're there. We're like Lent. You find us around the room, we're there. I'm just saying. We're here, we're here and we're ready to get going. But without further ado, let's dive right into this first episode. And I am pleased to be joined. I have to say that again. I am pleased to be joined by this week's MEC Player of the Week, West Liberty's own Mr. Pat Robinson. Pat, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So, so how's everything been for you, my man? I know you guys just had a couple of games last week. Sort of give us the lay of the land. What's going on with you? How's the team looking? And what did you see in those first two games? Um, I mean, there's there's obviously things that we could grow and that we could uh, that we could do a little bit better. But the overall outcome is two and zero against two really good opponents. And I mean, as a team, we couldn't be much happier. Just to give the audience a little bit of a perspective of what you did last week, my man, you went 26 points, six rebounds, four assists, and four steals. Now, if you thought that was good enough, my man shot 55% from the field last week. Is your is your wrist hurting? Is your are you having like like crack your wrist every once in a while? Or is it is it loose? It's like a flopping fish. I mean, are you feeling well this week, Pat? Uh, yeah, I feel good. Um, I think we have a good uh, training room, so I'm being there a lot, and I'm I'm, I'm healthy. So walk us through this then. So how often are you in there? I mean, athletes always say they like to get in the gym. They like to get in the weight room. How often is Pat Robinson in the gym? Um, it's, it's definitely every uh, everyday thing. It's uh, usually before practice, and then uh, I guess we will practice, and then I'll probably come back after practice, and then I'll get in the training room after that. So a good amount. Let's talk about this before we dive into this season. You're a you're a New Jersey native, and I got to ask, did you ever hear or have you ever heard of West Liberty prior to coming to the state of West Virginia? No, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I have not, but I'm glad I heard of it. So what attracted you about West Liberty? The banners. First time I walked in the gym was the banners. I mean, team that had this much success, I didn't even know if it was possible. So I just, I was happy to join. They got me quick and easy. Okay, cool. So before we talk about, again, the rest of the season, I want to talk about a guy that has been very impactful in your life. That's your head coach, Coach Ben Howlett. How have you guys sort of developed a unique relationship between the two? And what just makes that relationship so unique between the two of you? Um, the thing about Coach Howlett that I like the most is before I even uh, came to campus, he told me that he was going to push me and, and get the most out of me, however it was. And he'll say things and it'll click. And he'll always push me just a little bit harder than I'm, I'm, I'm used to. And he likes to say, get uncomfortable. And for that, I think that really set me up and just took me to a new level of my game. So Coach Howell has been very beneficial to me and my success in that. Now, I don't know if it was a play that you had last year. And I want to say it was against Fairmont at home. But... Did you see? Did you see Coach Hallett get off the floor? I think it was after one of your dunks, or somebody made a tremendous play. It was something like that. But I look over because I'm I'm over on the corner, and I look over, and there's Coach Hallett. He gets at least two or three feet up in the off the court. Did you see that by chance? No, nah, I didn't see it. But uh, some of my teammates were talking about that, and uh, Coach Hallett just he just loves he just loves to win, and I think that was a good play. So it really got the energy up. Now, Coach Hallett won't admit to this, but does he ever break out the basketball shoes and try and run up and down with you all? Uh, no, I think he knows that his time has passed and that um, I, think we, I think we got him. I don't think he wants to get embarrassed by us. I'm just saying, he may be listening to this, so I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, my man, let's talk more about this season because, again, you guys had a, a great week last week. You, got, you were earned MEC All-Player, I mean, Men's Basketball Player of the Week honors. And let's talk about this team. Let's dissect it. Let's play the game of operation. And let's sort of take it piece by piece. And let's start here. And let's start with the newcomers. When you look at this group of newcomers you guys got, because you guys have um, a Charleston Catholic native or Charleston Catholic alum, Aiden Satterfield, who came up as well. But just give me an overall general theme of what you're seeing from this new group of guys coming in for the Hilltoppers. Um, the common theme is that they all can shoot. And they all play very hard and had success at their high school level. 
Uh, for our transfers, they also have success, and the common theme is they can shoot as well, and they, um, they all play hard. And I think they're very smart, too. They're catching on pretty quick. In what way have you been more of a leader towards them? Because we know that Dalton Bowen is now at the College of Charleston, and also Luke Dyer had graduated as well. But how have you sort of been like a quote-unquote big brother for them and assumed that leadership role for them? Um, I know that all practices aren't pretty. And so during the ugly ones, I'll pick up my young guys or whoever's going to shoot out that practice, and I'll tell them everything's going to be okay. And I'll tell them exactly what they need to do instead of just yelling at them and tell them how they could correct what they're doing wrong. And I've just been trying to just be a leader and encourage them, pick them up, and, you know, just be that big bro. I find that fascinating because you said, you said something that I think that is very important for any student athlete, and that is the fact that you don't immediately yell unless necessary. And I want to talk about that. When you look at how you came through basketball, going all the way back to Pee Wee basketball to where you are now at West Liberty, who were some people that really directed you in a way more toward the leadership role? And then you started, you started finding the pieces just to connect the puzzle and realize, okay, if I want to become a leader for a team in the future, I have to do this. Who were some of those people for you? I think the main one's got to be my dad. I mean, he's he's been there every step of the way and uh, just showed me what it takes to, you know, just, just be a successful athlete and just how to go about things. So I think he played a huge part in it. Now, did your dad ever play basketball? Yeah, he played basketball. Now, I would assume that, you know, like Coach Halley, he's probably put the shoes up as well. Like you said earlier, his time has probably passed. Would, would, you, would, would that be fair to say? I mean, I mean, it, I don't know. He's he's a little bit stronger, so he just tries to post me up, and it doesn't really get anywhere. So, I, I don't really like the bully ball stuff. <laughs> so that's probably where the the weight room came into play. You thought, man, if I keep getting bullied by my dad, this is not gonna go well. It's not gonna exactly. go well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cool. So you know, let's talk about your parents then. So we we mentioned your dad. Let's talk about your mother, because I feel like for me, I, obviously. Um, a mother is very instrumental in just keeping you motivated and stuff like that. Trust me. I probably had the, like, as people would say, the biggest cheerleader on the sidelines every time because my mom was out there. Would you say the same for your mom? And how has she been very influential in your life? Uh, I guess my dad's more of like a, like a drill sergeant. So it's nice hearing, like, the opposite side and, like, the rubbing and comfort and stuff that my mom gave me. And it just, uh, I guess, helped me keep my head up. Um, she, she's a really nice fan, and when she watches the games and she says certain things, they stick. So I like hearing from my mom as well. Now, whenever your mom comes to games, is she is she always the first person you hear? Yeah, it's 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 a competition between her and, and my dad. Yeah. <laughs> it must be a universal mom thing, then. It's just any time you hear the stands or you just hear the crowd erupt, you always hear your mom, and you're just like, Mom, just stop. Just I'm trying to play basketball. Don't embarrass me, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you about this. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna continue talking about basketball, but you know, you're a New Jersey guy. I'm interested. I don't really know a lot about New Jersey, but what's the best meal that your mom makes? The best meal. Because Thanksgiving's right around the oh. corner, and we and you gotta start thinking about these things. You're like, Mom, I want this, this, and this on the menu. The best meal is is probably salmon. Probably salmon with green beans and. I, I know. I now know where I'm having dinner next is the Robinson House. Yeah. That, that, sounds, that sounds perfect. You get greens, you get salmon. Oh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Exactly. Now, do you cook? I cook a little bit. Ooh, okay, what do you make? I try to make salmon, but I'm not very good at it. But <laughs> I, I give it my best try. Oh, you live and you learn, my man. All right, well, cool. So mm -hmm. let's keep talking about this basketball season for you. And let's get to a guy that I think is going to be a key role in this year's West Liberty team, and that's Will Yoakum. He, he missed the second half of the season last year due, in, due to an injury. How big of an uh, impact is it just to get Will back into the lineup and get him back into those game reps that he had last year and, and the year prior? I mean, that's another guy that knows the system like the back of his hand. He's, he's a very um, – he's a different kind of a leader. He's lead by example. You see him in the gym, and it just, it just makes you want to get back in the gym. He works hard. He's persistent, and um, he, he's just—he's just a really good person to have around. And he takes a lot of attention off everyone on the team. He, he's a good cutter. He's a good rebounder, and he just makes the team better overall. Let's keep talking about this team because I, I, you guys were ranked preseason number one in the MEC, and where credit is due, you guys have a lot of guys returning as well. 
of the guys returning, we just mentioned we've, we've talked about you and we talked about Will, but who's a guy that's returning that you think is going to make the, a, a big step this year, making that next leap, and everybody's like, okay, we need to pay more attention to him. Who is that guy? Um, I guess I'm going to have to say Malik McKinney. Really? Malik is, is, is one of our guards that's got a lot more patient, and uh, sometimes he can be a little – a little fast at times, but his decision making has got so much better. And during the fall, you could just see a complete uh, turnaround in his game. And he's he's just been in the gym. His shot is better. He put on a little bit of muscle. I think he's going to be really good for us too. Talk about him a little bit more. You know, when you really look at his game, just uh, uh, to separate what he's been working, like what you just said. What makes him so dynamic in the half court? Because, you know, obviously last year he had that late shot against Glenville to get you guys into the title game. But just talk about him. What separates him from other guys that you've played with? Um, I'm, I'm going to definitely say speed. I mean, he's probably the fast, one of the fastest guards in the nation. But besides that, his hands and his defense is, is hard. And I like the score. So in practice, I don't really like going up against him. He makes it hard. And I feel like that's why I have a lot of success scoring against his other guards. That's, that's that's funny you say that because I'm just imagining you and you and Malik, and, and that that would be a really good matchup to watch. So I'll, I guess I'll have to come to practice one day just to see if if you and Malik would just go one on one full court. For sure, you'll definitely see some. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to you real quick, and, I, and I'm interested in this because you know, as an upperclassman, I always feel like it's important to do some self reflection. And I feel like you do a great job of that just from speaking with you in, the, in these last few minutes. But when you look at your game this season, obviously you just earned the first honor, the Men's Basketball Player of the Week honors in the MEC. But when you look at your game, where do you want to excel the most throughout the season? Um, I think I can be elite on offense, but I need to be consistently elite on defense. I feel like I can get that then I feel like I'm uh, really going to help my team out on both sides of the ball. I don't want to take plays off on defense. I want to get offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, steals, and I want to shut down other teams' best player or make their life hard. How do you go about doing that, getting better defensively in in practice? Because I know some some players have different drills and and certain um, concepts that they want to try and attain. But you, how do you how do you go about getting better defensively? I mean, I feel like um, I'm, I'm gifted with the phys- physicality for it. I think I, my skills are there. I, I just need to lock in with my mind. I need to just sit down and guard and say, you're not scoring on me. And I think I just need to focus on defense. I need to just, you know, just focus on defense. Obviously, being conditioned is a big help, um, but mostly it's, it's a mindset thing. And I'll end on this note, and I appreciate you joining me for this first episode, but growing up as a New Jersey kid, and now you're at, now you're, you know, one of the veterans for West Liberty, who was a player that you looked up to the most, whether it be college basketball or NBA, who was a guy, or maybe even two guys for that matter, that you really looked up to growing up and you sort of duplicated your game after as well? Um, I, I want to say probably like a six inch shorter version of, I guess LeBron James. That's definitely my uh, my favorite player. He's elite on both sides of the ball, and he gets his teammates involved, and I feel like he's, he's just a good leader, and he's level-headed. Awesome. I like that. Well, okay, I, I, I lied. I have one more question. Now, are you Team LeBron or Team MJ? Uh, I argue about this with my dad all the time. I got to go LeBron. You're my, you're my favorite interview I've ever done. That's the, only, <laughs> that's, that's the only right answer. That is the only right answer, and you just nailed exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. I mean, come on. It's LeBron. Not even close. Now, I will admit this. I will admit this. As a LeBron fan, I did watch The Last Dance. Did you watch The Last Dance as well? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Did you watch all 10 episodes with your dad? Yes. Was there arguing? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I'm the exact same way because literally the the episode that they were doing The Bad Boys with, I, I just kept talking to my dad. I'm like, LeBron would have dominated. He would have. Mm-hmm. People grab him mm-hmm. on the shoulders, and my dad's like, oh, no, he wouldn't. I'm like, go watch his highlights. Go watch him play. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's exactly. no, no, no comparison. Right. He was already beefed up. People had to adjust to him. Michael had to adjust to them. Exactly. There we go. See, 
this is this is why we this is why we work together. This is why we work. Mm-hmm. This is why we work. Well, Pat, I appreciate your time. Best of luck this season, and we will certainly talk soon later on in the season. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that was Pat Robinson, West Liberty's very own. He earned MEC Player of the Week honors after averaging 26 points per game last year, shooting 55 percent from the field. Man, oh man, can that guy? He's a high flyer. I mean. Just saying, he knows I would say that to him, but he's a high flyer. I've seen him a few times. I'm just like, whew, he can go. That cat can go. Well, we'll be right back, and we'll talk more about last season, last week in the MEC, including what some women's and men's basketball teams did as well. And and also, we will also be previewing the week ahead in the Mountain East Conference. You won't want to miss it here on MEC Roundup. Mark, just keep it going. I'm going to – I'll just, just keep the recording going. I'm just going to – just keep uh, – just talk to Pat real quick. My man, I appreciate it. Yep, no problem. If there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. But, again, you were great, and I appreciate it a lot. Oh, yeah, no problem. Well, my man, I'll let you get out of here. But, again, I appreciate your time, and we will talk soon. Appreciate it. I'll see you. Yes, sir. Before we talk about the men's basketball side, let's dip our toes into the women's basketball portion of the Mountain East Conference. And let's first start with – start here. Let's do, a, let's do a review. So what we'll do is each and every episode over the next few weeks, we'll review and we will also preview what's going on in the Mountain East Conference. So first, like I said, let's do a review. So we just spoke with Pat, and he earned the men's basketball honor for Player of the Week. West Virginia State's own Hannah Shriver, a 100 West Virginia native, earned the women's basketball Player of the Week honor. She averaged 17 points. Seven rebounds and five assists. She she was all over the place, helping the Lady Yellow Jackets do what they do best, and that's cause havoc and score at a high, high rate. So watch out for her this season. She's going to be a tremendous player as well. She played at North Marion High School here up north in West Virginia. So another person as well that I think will excel throughout this season. We may see her getting these uh, honors again. Would not surprise me, but... We want to give credit to Hannah because she earned the MEC Women's Basketball Player of the Week honors as well. Also, the Lady Pioneers, Glenville State's very own, is off to a great start as they netted two wins last week. The MEC started last week, so they are now 2-0 and to begin this 2021-22 campaign. And the Lady Pioneers won their game by an average of 11 points. They had a close game their first game, but in their second game, they go out there lined up and won by 20 points unbelievable 20 points that's that's always hard to do in a college basketball game but the lady pioneers did so in tremendous fashion as well that's the, actually this is actually the first time since 2018 that the lady pioneers have started their season 2 and 0 think about that in the last few years they've been 1 and 1 through two games now since the first time since 2018 they are 2 and 0 to begin their season campaign they will play tonight at Johnson C. Smith University down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, next up, Fairmont State's own Alyssa D'Angelo continues to pour in the stat sheet. Now listen to this. She went 19 points in the first game and followed up by another uh, double-digit performance by scoring 15 points in the second game as well, helping Fairmont in the stat sheet as well. Uh, she added on to her double-figure double performance total. Think about this. In the last eight of her nine games, she is – posted double figure performances so she's a scoring machine she goes out there ties her shoes and she says okay let's go me and you i'm gonna i'm gonna score on you you're gonna blink and i'm gone simple as that i'm just saying watch out for Alyssa for the lady falcons of fairmont state next up let's go to the preview portion of women's basketball here in the mountain east conference and let's start here non-conference schedules are slowly coming to an end but That means that conference schedule is right around the corner, and it all begins on Saturday as 10 of 12 MEC teams will begin conference schedule. That's on both the men's and women's side as well. So we wish everybody that that is playing this weekend in the conference schedule best of luck, and we look forward to seeing those results as you can go on our website on the Mountain East uh, Conference website and see the schedule of all the teams throughout the week and now we can keep up with everything we got stats we got standings everything go check it out go check out the mountain east website and you can find all the latest information regarding this conference as well next up 
we'll look more down towards what else is going on as well. So leading into this, I mentioned how non-conference schedules are going to continue to be a theme leading into Saturday. And over the next few days, six teams, yes, six Mountain East Conference teams will be hitting the road before beginning conference play. Think about that. Six teams will be on the road. No, excuse me, six games will be featured by an MEC team on the road. So again, the strength of schedule on the road will always be a factor leading into that conference schedule and also leading down the road just with strength of schedule as well. Hopefully we have a few teams get into the NCAA, NCAA tournament and shine there as well. And then lastly, a battle between two of the preseason top four teams in the MEC on the women's side will face off this week in Concord. The Lady Mountain Lions will take on the University of Charleston Lady Golden Eagles. Concord comes into that game 2-0, and and the Lady Golden Eagles are 1-1 one and one as well. So a tremendous game down there in the capital city. So you can find that game here on the Mountain East Conference website as you can find the live streams to all the games, to all the sports, whatever, whatever it may be, you can find it and you can watch those games or listen to those games as well. Let's shift our attention now to the men's basketball portion of this podcast. We'll start with the review like we just did with the women's basketball. And let's start here. West Virginia Wesleyan. Yes, the Bobcats get their first win since March 4th, 2019 over Urbana. That's whenever they won their last game. And he defeated Seton Hill by six, 85 to 79, Monday evening over in Buchanan. Tremendous win for Coach Derek Sloan in year one with the Bobcats. So nothing but a lot of credit to them. They're building a great, they're building something great down there in Buchanan. So keep an eye out for them as well. Jaden Hibbett, let's give him a quick shout out as well. He currently leads Wesleyan in points, averaging 16 points per game through their first three games. So another high flyer. I will definitely recommend you watch out for him as well because he's going to be a guy that is going to be pouring in the stat sheet for the Bobcats as well. They also have a lot of other tremendous players as well, but right now Hibbett is the main guy leading them in points. Next up, West Virginia State is continuing its hot streak with wins. Now, before we go any further about what they're doing, let's talk about three individuals that I like to refer to as the three-headed dragon. Why, why the three-headed dragon? Well, I'll tell you why. The, the Yellow Jackets res, uh, return Glenn Abram, Anthony Pittman, a capital standout, former capital standout, and Jeremiah Moore as well. So between the three of them, the three of them are averaging 13 or more points between the three. Jeremiah Moore averaging 13 points, being the least, and Glenn Abram leading not only his team, but the Mountain East Conference in scoring with 28 points per game early on in this 2021-22 campaign. And he pours in the stat sheet. Another guy, speaking of that three-headed dragon, Anthony Pittman, again, I said a, a former capital standout. He's also pouring the stat sheet, but on another level. Yes, the points and the rebounds, but he's getting it done on the defensive side in blocks and steals. He ranks in the top two in blocks and steals. He ranks second in the Mountain East Conference in blocks per game with three, and he is first in the Mountain East Conference in steals with a total of nine steals. So, you know, he his hands are very active. If you've ever watched him play, he's a high flyer, tremendous bounce, tremendous athleticism from Anthony Pittman as well. But West Virginia State is a team you need to keep an eye out for this season. I'm just saying they got some dudes. Coach Brian Poor is very, very optimistic about what this team's potential. So it'll be interesting to see how they perform leading in through the rest of the season as well. Rounding out this as well, Fairmont State. We just talked about the ladies' side with Fairmont State. Let's talk about the men's side. There's, there, you think that their offense is electric? Their defense is just as good as well. They're bringing back a ton of guys on the Sears team. They lost Dale Bonner to NCAA Division I champion Baylor, but they're bringing guys back like Zion Dobbs, Isaiah Sanders, guys like that that can get it done on both ends of the court. And get this. Through two games, I know it's early, but if you can do this early, it's always, always positive. They are only allowing teams 54 points per game. I had to make sure I got that number correctly because it's just a, it's just a mind-boggling statistic. 54 points per game in two games. In two games. Unbelievable. Coach Tim Koenig, the defending MEC Conference Tournament champions, are doing a tremendous job through two games. 
So keep an eye out for them as well. But also just keep an eye out for all these teams. I mean, it's, it's going to be a tremendous year for all these teams, top to bottom, all the preseason teams. It's going to be a great year in men's and women's basketball as well. So you don't want to miss it here on the Mountain East Conference website or even on our social media pages as well. But before we conclude, let's talk about a preview. Let's look ahead. I always like to look ahead. Let's look ahead real quick. And let's start here. Second-year head coach Chris Richardson decided that he wants to play whoever, it seemed like. And this week, in four days, they'll be playing three games. They'll play tonight, Thursday, and Saturday. Think about that. Three games in four days. One of those games is against preseason number three team in the Mid-American Conference, the MAC. They're playing an exhibition game against the Akron Zips. So watch out for that. They had, a, they had an exhibition game earlier in the season against Northern Kentucky, but I'm interested to see what they do against this Akron team. Akron came out to West Virginia University recently and had an exhibition game against them, but I'm inter- interested to see what Coach Richardson can do with this year's team, with this year's Cardinals team as well. Has a has a tremendous recruiting class as well, but three games in four days, you'll learn a lot about a team in, the, in that span. So keep an eye out for that. Go look at the results on their website as well and follow them along on their social media pages as well. And again, just to reiterate it, 10 of 12 MEC conference teams will begin their conference portion, their conference schedule, excuse me, this Saturday. So again, a tremendous start to the season. And as always, follow us, see what's going on as well. And here's a number for you, and we'll end on this. MEC teams, MEC home teams, since the beginning of the season last week, are 7-1 and at home. Think about that. MEC teams are 7-1 and one at home to begin this season. So regardless, I know it's non-conference games, but if you can start a season 7-1 and one from a whole scale in the Mountains Conference, that is something that you definitely would want to look for moving through the rest of the season amid conference schedule being right around the corner. I'm just saying, as a fan of the Mountains Conference, it's going to be a dandy. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to work on that, but... You know, bear with me. But as always, you can follow us on our social media pages. Go look at the Mountainese Conference. And again, you can follow me on social media as well at Taylor underscore Kennedy 7. And as always, rate us, review us. We'd love to hear from you. And if you got a story about the Mountainese Conference, share it with us. We'll share it. We'll share it. And it may be said here on this program. So with that, I conclude episode one of MEC Roundup. Again, I'm your host, Taylor Kennedy. And thank you all for joining us. Thank you again to Pat Robinson, West Liberty's own. He earned the MEC Player of the Week honors in men's basketball, and he just joined me on this first episode of this brand new podcast. Well, thank you all for listening, and I will catch you all next week on episode two.